Good afternoon, I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Franklin with a more complicated tropical update, not because of our system that we've been tracking, but we have a new name, Hermine, but it's not the one that we've been watching. If you were with us this morning, we had Tropical Depression 9, that is what we've been watching in the Caribbean, but also Tropical Depression 10, that formed off of the African coast. And it was kind of a matter of time to see which one would win out and become named first. Well. 10 1. So 10 is now Hermine off the African coast. So the next name on the list is Ian. So if nine were to get a name this weekend, it would be Ian, not Hermine. That's why I usually don't like to uh, preemptively start naming storms when they're not yet organized, because it's always possible that something else kind of slips in there uh, undetected. And that's exactly what happened with uh, 10 now Hermine. So Ian is the next name up. Now watching it on satellite, it has started to show maybe some better signs of trying to organize into a named storm. The four o'clock advisory, the center was still fairly well exposed from most of the thunderstorm development. However, over the last several hours, we've started to see that change a bit. Now, this is a high resolution infrared satellite. And when I say high resolution, it means these images on satellite actually come in every single minute. This is about as real time as you can possibly get with regards to satellite data. It's actually more real time than even radar would be. Radar is usually every five to seven minutes. So this is a real time image of the satellite. And when you kind of clearly look at or try and get a clear picture of what's going on down at the surface. We do have that center of circulation, which earlier today was well exposed from the center or well exposed from the thunderstorms because of strong wind shear that looks to be changing a bit. And when we switch over to our satellite here, you see that big flare, but thunderstorms is a little bit closer to where the center of the storm is. So as that center becomes a little bit more in line with those stronger thunderstorms on top, it's better organizing and we'll likely see further strengthening and it'll be at that point that we'll likely see those winds pick up a little bit and we'll have tropical storm Ian again is the next name up that is anticipated by the hurricane center and all of our computer guidance now the forecast to track really has not changed much if you were looking at us earlier this morning we were showing you that initial track that does take it over western Cuba and then somewhere along the west coast of Florida the new models have come in and they have changed slightly with a little bit of a west Westerly jog, not very dramatic. Still looking at a landfall over western Cuba as we head into Monday, then by late Monday, early Tuesday, moving into the extreme southeastern Gulf, kind of clipping the Florida Keys, keeping in mind that the heaviest of the storm would be over the southern peninsula of Florida, and then continuing northward. Now, this is why I like showing the center line of the storm because it just shows that slight change, perhaps in thinking from the hurricane center, and sometimes that those landfall points makes a huge and dramatic difference to who gets the worst uh, impacts of the storm. If you were with us earlier and watching that center line, it was a little bit more, more over the Fort Myers area. Now it's a little bit north of there and thus a little bit closer to Tampa as a landfall, but certainly all along the west coast of Florida and even very much South Florida will have to keep this in mind because that entire area really up toward Apalachicola does fall within the margin of error. Still looking a little bit more like the west coast of Florida, but still big question mark as to exactly where along the west coast of Florida. As I said, we were kind of expecting a little bit of a westerly jog in the track only because we started to see a little bit more of the model consensus a little more west within the margin of error. So it was not a big surprise when the four o'clock advisory came out and that track was adjusted. But notice almost all of the computer models fall well within that margin of error so that kind of widening out of the model uncertainty is taking into account by the forecasted cone. Again, this is only looking at the center of the storm. This is not the extent of where we would see some of the strong winds and rainfall. That's going to be well removed from the center off to the west, but more so off to the east. So really most of the entire peninsula of Florida, not as much the panhandle right now, but almost all of the rest of the state of Florida will feel the impacts of what is now TD9 and possibly eventually into Ian. So here's the idea behind the steering currents and why we think it's going to go where it's going to go. We're watching a developing upper trough to our north. So now the trough is on land being well sampled by uh, 
uh, weather data when we send up those uh, weather balloons. We can now kind of capture the upper atmosphere as this system is over land. So we're now well forecasting this upper trough. We're also well forecasting this upper hive, which has been sitting to the north of TD9. That's what's keeping the storm moving to the west through the day tomorrow and then by Sunday we'll start to see this upper high weakening a bit off to the west and allowing for more of a turn around the outer uh, periphery of this high. So it's going to be following the high along and also note the deepening trough along the west coast or it looks to me along the east coast pulling the storm northward. While it starts moving north note the winds in the upper atmosphere across the Gulf of Mexico as a west southwesterly or southwesterly wind which will be pushing the storm toward the eastern Gulf and toward Florida. You've got the upper trough diving. It follows these weaknesses in the atmosphere. The upper high off to the east and this wind across the Gulf pushing it in the direction of Florida. That's why we're fairly confident now in this forecast. And keep in mind, this is exactly what the Euro has been saying for now about the last three to almost four days. The Euro kind of locked in on this steering pattern and keeping the storm moving toward Florida with the other models eventually falling in line with the Euro. The Euro just tends to pick up on these steering patterns faster than the GFS and even faster than a lot of the models. And what we typically see is the Euro kind of holding on to this forecast with the other models falling in behind. And that is what we have seen so far with TD9 and eventually what would become EM. This is a look at the wind shear over TD9. Right now, these brighter colors, the oranges to reds to fuchsia, that is the strong wind shear on the eastern side and almost over the center of the storm. Note the lack of wind shear though across the western and central Caribbean. So as the storm continues along that path, the wind shear slackens off and the storm is able to organize. And keep in mind, the Hurricane Center is usually a little bit more conservative with their forecast strength. This could easily be a strengthening cat two before it even reaches Cuba. We always say prepare for a category stronger. So folks in Western Cuba, while it may still be a one, prepare for this to be possibly a two, maybe even a three, because it looks like in the upper atmosphere, there really isn't anything to hinder this from further intensifying and possibly rapidly intensifying as it continues past Cuba and into the Gulf. We'll have strong wind shear across northern Florida, but not southern Florida, which is why this storm is likely to continue intensifying right up to the point of landfall. We don't wish these type of storms on anyone, and certainly this is going to be a devastating storm for much of south and central, possibly even into northern Florida. But the pattern that we'll be seeing for us in southeast Louisiana, you kind of feel guilty. It's going to be gorgeous next week. High temperatures will be in the lower 80s, maybe even some spots staying in the upper 70s for an afternoon high. Sunny skies, less humid, breezy, beautiful weather as we wrap up September. However, after the last two hurricane seasons, we need a break. And it looks like we are going to be getting a break from this storm as we continue to watch it. In fact, speaking about that gorgeous weather that we're anticipating, cold front moves through at some point during the day on Monday with only a few showers. And then that front very much acts as a shield keeping this storm away from us. So we're starting to now get a better picture of the storm structure as it is organizing. So the computer models are going to start locking in on a forecast and we're not going to see through the weekend and early next week much change in that forecast. We also have higher confidence in the steering pattern that is keeping this away from us. So you know nothing in weather is ever guaranteed but I put a high high confidence that this storm is not going to affect us at all and this is going to be a Florida storm. So we will continue to monitor this over the weekend, but keep in mind this weekend we will be hot but dry with a few showers possible early Monday with a cold front that will be ushering in a beautiful next week.